How is it going everybody? You're watching Danable Tech and today I'm going to talk about Google Photos. So photos are a huge part of our iPhones and the way we store them and the way we manage them is also very important. By default we can store our iPhone photos in the iPhone local storage and in the cloud using iCloud but Google Photos is a very nice alternative so in this video I'm going to show you how to use Google Photos and I'm going to answer the question, is it better than iCloud? This video is also very useful if you used to be an Android user and you use Google Photos but now you bought an iPhone for example and you want to see if Google Photos is good on the iPhone, if it works well on the iPhone or not. So let's go ahead and get started. Now let's start from the top, I've just downloaded Google Photos, so let's go through the setup process and then let's see what the service is all about. So let's open it up. Then I don't want notifications. Uh, and then we have some options here. So backup and sync is a normal backup, so uh, it's a security feature. Uh, it's, it means it's gonna back up your media, so I think it's a very interesting thing. I'm gonna leave it on. Now we have two important choices, high quality and original. High quality means you have free unlimited storage, but you're not gonna save your photos and videos in full resolution. It's gonna save in high quality, but not full resolution, which for me, I don't like. I like iCloud because with iCloud I save all my media in full resolution and I like to save it that way. So I'm going to choose original. But you have this drawback because with original it counts against your quota. So in my situation I only have 15 gigs of storage left. But it's the same as iCloud. If you go beyond your quota you have to pay more to get more storage. Same thing with Google Photos so for now the same thing. And here we have the option to use cellular data when there's no Wi-Fi and I'm going to enable that because I like that option. So here you choose your account, so that's my Google account, one of my Google accounts, and then you can confirm. Okay, you can see that on this screen Google Photos has already imported all my libraries, so you can see all my photos here, and as you guys can see, it has automatically started backing up all of my photos and videos. I have over 8,000 photos and videos, and as you guys can see, it's saying here backing up, which means it is sending all of those files to the cloud. So while it is sending all those files to the cloud, let's go ahead and look at the rest of the app. So here we have albums, right here at the bottom, and then of course you can manually create an album. You can create an album of people, where you just select their faces, uh, an album of places, things, videos, which it created automatically, uh, collages, animations, and movies. This album section is relatively similar to what you get with the stock photos app uh, in your iPhone, but in my opinion it has a few less features, so it is not as complete. Next, let's take a look at Assistant. Uh, again, it, has, it is very similar uh, to what you get in the Photos app on the iPhone, but here we use Google to find movies, colleges, and things like photos and videos, and then uh, you can use uh, artificial intelligence to find uh, the exact photo and video you want, and you can do the same thing with Siri. Uh, Siri got updated and since iOS 10, I believe, you can do the same thing. Uh, ask Siri for uh, photos from a uh, trip you made, uh, from some specific day, from some specific holiday, and things like that. So then it is pretty much the same thing. The only difference is here we are using Google's intelligence, and uh, with the iPhone we are using Siri. And last but not least, we have here sharing, which you can just share photos or a folder uh, to someone you want. Like, for example, you had a trip together and then you create an album and then you share with a person. So I'm just going to show you how it looks, but it's pretty straightforward. You add a title, you select photos, and then you select those photos, uh, and then you're going to go for next, for example. Uh, and then, of course, it's going to need to upload because this photo was not uploaded before. Uh, and then you can just share and select a person. Okay, so now you can just, uh, it's asking me for my contacts, so I choose OK. And then uh, I can just choose a person from my contacts and then share that photo or share a folder. Okay, so that's a pretty simple feature. It's a feature that the stock photos app on your iPhone also has. You can also share photos and share albums and do the same thing. Okay, now that the photos are still backing up, uh, it has already backed up over a thousand photos, but it's a lot. I want to compare all those features we talked about directly with the stock iPhone app. So let's go ahead and do it very quickly. 
So let's start with albums. Here you can see I have quite a lot of albums and all of those albums were created by myself. Of course, I'm gonna have more information here than on Google Photos because I've been using this and I have created this, okay? Uh, and here we have people in places, so same story, people, faces, places, same thing. But here is something I like with the Photos app that the Google Photos doesn't have, which is media types. So you can see uh, videos, selfies, live photos, portrait, long spo exposure, panoramas, time lapses, slow mos, bursts, so screenshots, uh, animated, and, and you still have the hidden photos, which for me is something very interesting. Uh, a lot of people like to hide some of their photos for privacy reasons, uh, imports, and recently deleted, which is the trash. So for me, when we're talking about albums, uh, the Photos app has the same features Google Photo has, but many more. Now let's compare the assistant part. Actually, after researching a little bit, I saw that the assistant on Google Photos is much more restricted than the assistant on the Photos app. And I'm gonna explain you why. Because the assistant on Google Photos is pretty much, the, pretty much the same thing as the For You tab right here. So with artificial intelligence, it creates those albums, it creates these colleges, this, these videos, automatically based on your memory. So I haven't created any of those uh, things you're seeing right here. So then I can see, you can see things like trips, you can see special dates, holidays, people and, vari and various other things. So uh, Google Photos does this exact same thing. It can group uh, photos and videos and things based on, a, based on a trip, based on a theme, based on a holiday and things like that. So that's pretty much the same. But there's a difference because uh, with iOS, with the Photos app, you can use Siri to ask and find a photo and a video you want. Any any photo, any video you want, you just ask the assistant and it'll find for you. And Google Photos can't do that. And let me show you how that works. Show me photos from my last trip to Sao Paulo. And then, as you guys can see, it already picked up the location and then it's showing me uh, photos from my last trip to Sao Paulo. So as you guys saw, it showed me all those photos and videos from my last trip to Sao Paulo. Uh, it was very smart and it just located all those photos and videos. And after that screen, you can see this other screen right here uh, with places, uh, groups of people, uh, and even categories. I didn't create this, but then this is my nephew uh, and then it just automatically put his baby, cars, food, uh, sports, sports cars, like I have to say that when we're talking about artificial intelligence and regarding photos, Apple is way beyond Google on this. And last but not least, we have shared albums. So in our albums tab right here, we can just add and we can create a shared album. It is, and it is the same story. Uh, you can just put the name and after you select the photos or you can select the whole folder, a whole album, and then you can select the person and you share. So this is pretty much the same. So, I showed you how to set up Google Photos, how to use it, what it looks, all of its features, and even compared all of those features to the Photos app on the iPhone. So, when you use Google Photos, you're gonna have two independent photo libraries. You're gonna have your local photo library, which is your Photos app, it's gonna stay the same, okay? So, you take a photo, it's gonna go uh, to your photo library, it's gonna stay there locally using storage on your iPhone, and then you're gonna have your cloud library, which is gonna be Google Photos. So let's let's just imagine this scenario. You take a photo, it goes to your photo library, it stays there, it uses your memory, okay, your storage, then automatically it's gonna go to Google Photos and it's gonna go to Google Cloud, okay? So you're gonna be using storage on both those libraries, locally and cloud. That's very important. So if you want, you can actually delete photos from your uh, local storage, from your Photos app, and it is still gonna be in Google Photos because those libraries don't communicate with each other. So if you wanna save storage, every time you take a photo, you're gonna have to wait for that photo to be uploaded uh, to Google Photos, to, to Google's cloud, okay? And then after, you're gonna have to delete from your iPhone storage, from your Photos app. So that's not automatic, you're gonna have to do it manually, which is kind of a pain, okay? This is the situation when you're using Google Photos. But if you use iCloud to store your photos, you're also gonna have two photo libraries, but they're always gonna be connected, they're always gonna be synced with uh, one another, and if you just choose the option, optimize iPhone storage, that's in your settings, optimize iPhone storage, 
uh, that means that the storage on your iPhone is going to be optimized. You're not going to use pretty much any uh, local storage on your iPhone and all the original high resolution photos are going to be in iCloud. So for me, I like it much better that way because you don't have to do anything. It automatically saves storage on your iPhone. It automatically goes to iCloud and stays synced to all your devices at the same time. So you take a photo on your iPhone, it goes to your iPad and to your Mac and then you have all full resolution photos in iCloud and you can see those photos anytime you want. And that goes to the other features I showed you as well. As you guys could see, uh, the interface and the integration uh, with the Photos app is much better. If you want to share an album, it's much easier. Uh, you can just share, share via iMessage, via AirDrop. Uh, you, you, if you are in the Apple environment, it is just much, much better to use iCloud. So photos are better, uh, the assistant is better, is much smarter. Uh, you can use artificial intelligence to recognize so many different things. You can use Siri to look for so many different things. Uh, in this integration, just the fact that you have everything uh, in your Apple Watch, in your iPad, everything is just so well integrated that if you use an iPhone, I just can't recommend using Google Photos. iCloud is so much better, so much better integrated, so much faster, interface is better, and it has more features. So honestly, iCloud wins. So I'll see you guys on Tuesday. I hope you enjoyed this video. Please make sure to hit the like button below if you did. And also click on this bubble right here, okay, right here. And then click on the subscribe button. And then click on this video right here because I'm sure you're gonna love it. So that's it, bye bye.